the moment in and of itself is actually it's it's perfect it's balanced it's splendid and it has the potential for all things really our experience the interpretation of the experience is shaped by where we are in that moment Aloha and what's up? Welcome back to the Soul What Podcast. This is Jason. Today, uh, I wanted to talk about stress, stress management, tools, tips, experiences, things that I've I've gone through. As I'm talking, I'm smiling and laughing a little bit because I want to talk about stress. I actually just recorded a good 20 minutes of this very podcast and it got lost in the cloud. It's all good, though. Uh, It just means that this take will be even better. With that, the reason I want to talk a little bit about stress today is because I keep hearing that song. It's the most wonderful time. You get the point. Uh, It's also one of the most incredibly stressful times of the year. It's kind of crazy that it is. It, It makes a lot of sense. There's just so much going on, happenings, get togethers gift giving if that's your thing white elephants purple elephants in addition to family friends loved ones there's a lot of moving parts add into the fact that the rest of your life doesn't necessarily stop and honestly it doesn't i actually just recently left my last job and am in between the start of my new job and i gotta tell you this this week that i've been out has been perhaps more stressful than <laughs> the last couple of weeks were before as I exited my last job. I know that because my doctor has me monitoring my blood pressure and my blood pressure has been higher this week. But there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, we had some family in town on the other side of the island, a lot of driving, in addition to that, figuring some things up because my wife and I are going to be going on a trip. And these things happen. That's just life. Like I said, your life doesn't stop. So what can you do? What can we do? What do I do when stress starts to come into play? Now, full disclosure slash disclaimer, I'm not the best at managing stress. I have improved immensely over the course of my my life, especially as an adult. When as someone who was a very serious child and can still be quite serious, even though I feel like I'm way less serious today than I was 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on years ago. I certainly laugh a lot more. Um, and the same can be said about my ability to manage and navigate stress. Uh, it's a process, and you never know what can happen. For me, what stress does is if my stress level is too high and I'm not doing a great job of, of managing I start to have an increase in anxiety. And then if my anxiety gets to be not manageable, that can trigger depression. And I've struggled with that throughout my life. In hindsight, I can look back and see how I was an anxious child. I see how things that I picked up in pattern played out in my teenage years. And it's only in being an adult, having much more life experience, including a large and varied degree of different forms of loss and the grief that comes with that, that I can kind of see how the pieces fit together and integrate. One way that I've learned, and this is from one of my favorite writers, speakers, teachers, he's a Vietnamese Buddhist monk, and I might butcher his name, so I apologize to anyone that knows it. And if you know how to pronounce it better than I do, please do. Uh, hit me up and share that, but take not on. I first discovered him in the year 2003, and it was the book Pieces Every Step. And he threw out the challenge to breathe and to smile. And to this day, it's it's a concept that if I get too heady with, I just can't do it. Can't do two things at the same time. Uh, I can laugh and smile. But but that whole, like how it fits together, that was such a tough one, and it still can be. As he talks about it with the breath, the point of the breath, the breath has a grounding effect on us. 
there's studies out there that have shown the value in taking a deep breath, how that can slow the heart rate, how that can like slow the mind. And at least from what I've studied and practiced in my own experience, when you take that breath, it's almost like hitting a reset point. And one of the tools and tips that is shared in the teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh and his followers, it's the idea that when you breathe in, you acknowledge whatever is going on in the moment. Is that stress? You would say something along the lines of breathing in, I acknowledge there's stress. And as you exhale, you would say, breathing out, I smile. Or breathing out, I embrace this. I've been working with that for a few months now. And that's something in combination with therapy and my therapist pointing out an increased need when there are these high stress periods to really be mindful. It does wonders. The thing about not catching your stress before it takes off. Now I shared from my experience, anxiety can increase and that can lead to depression. Uh, imagine if you will, a train, you know, you're trying to get to some place, but you get on the wrong train and 20 minutes, you realize that you got on the wrong train, you missed your connection and you end up set back an hour or more from your original destination and the timeline that you needed. That's what stress can do to us. Stress can overrun your life. You can miss deadlines. You can also miss just beautiful things happening to you in the moment. Miss opportunities. Stress is something that the more we cultivate practices, whether it's meditation practice, a mindfulness practice, or even just if you go and exercise. And in addition to the breath work and the watching, there's a number of other things that I have that help me to better manage my stress, including the creation of art, you know, art therapy, 100% believe in that. It's a form of moving energy. I also train jujitsu, uh, run, walk, lift weights. These moving forms of meditation can be game changing. Not only are they beneficial for your health, but integrating that mind, body, spirit connection. When you're doing these things, it's forcing you to be mindful, present. And one of the things I loved the most about my first experience in jujitsu was finding my breath as I'm getting crushed by a training partner who's over 300 pounds or doing a drill where we're mounted by multiple people. This is my first year of jujitsu many, many years back. And uh, we did this drill on, it was escape or die. And we were mounted by two training partners and I couldn't do it. Part of the reason I couldn't do it one, my technique at the time was not the best. And two, I, I panicked. I had the weight of two people, couldn't breathe. I was exhausted. It was a very eye-opening experience for me. At other times, if you're lifting weights, you've got some heavy weight that you're trying to move. Even if it's lightweight, you want to be in tune with what's going on because you could risk injury. You're out there running, you need to be paying attention. I went for a jog with our dog the other day and I had to pay attention to the movements of my body, but also his movements so that he didn't cut me off and I didn't tumble over him and crack my head open. So stress in so many ways can be detrimental, but that doesn't mean that it's not impossible to overcome. Another thing about resetting and getting back to the moment it's this idea or this concept that I like to think of and it helps when you remember mindfulness, this concept of okayness. I don't think I invented okayness. It'd be cool if I did. I'm sure other people have talked about it. And over the years, since I first started writing about it, I Googled and see people do actually use the term. My take on okayness and why it helps me to remember mindfulness is the idea that the moment in and of itself is actually it's, it's perfect. It's balanced, it's blended, and it has the potential for all things. Really our experience, the interpretation of the experience, it's shaped by where we are in that moment and where our head goes, where our perspective is. If we're wearing stress colored goggles, 
we're going to see the experience is stressful. If we're wearing a different pair of shades, we're going to see and experience something completely different. And I think that's powerful to remember because it's a reminder that we have the ability to make a change, to affect change, and how we want to shift and live and view our experience. A quick story that I'll share, which further illustrated this point to me in 2019. This was about six months before my dad passed, and I had just had a dream that he was walking alongside my parents' home, and then he collapsed to his knees. He was carrying a planter, and he looked at me and he smiled. I interpreted the dream as my dad was, was slowing down, and it, it rocked me. Whether it was predictive or whether just on some intuitive level, I, I knew and felt that connection. I knew that I had to just maximize whatever time remained with my dad. So I went to go visit my parents and my dad, my dad and I throughout my life, I remember just talking stories with him all the time. And I loved how he would just create an older space for me. And there were times I know earlier, especially in my, my teens, my twenties, where I think for my dad, I knew that he loved me, but perhaps he didn't necessarily agree or understand where I was at. Cause honestly, I didn't necessarily understand where I was at as I navigated a lot of the different chapters of my journey. But as my dad started to, to slow down, he really lost the ability to just talk stories and he was there you could talk to him but you know the jokes the sentences just how he shared he was really limited by whatever it was that he was dealing with which to this day don't really know exactly what that was and i remember struggling with that being really sad feeling like man my dream is actually true my dad is slowing down and i was sitting in their living room I was watching my dad because he was taking a nap. And I was just reflecting on the whole experience. And I was overcome both by sadness, because it's, it's really ultimately sad, and just simultaneously so much joy and beauty that I even had the opportunity to sit there with him. And this feeling and knowing and appreciation for the relationship, who he was, the sacrifices he and my mom made, it was just so, so immensely powerful for me. And it's rooted in love. It gave me a new, a new flavor of love to taste and experience. That was really priceless, you know? So as I sat in that moment, I realized I had one of two ways I could have went. I could have like immersed myself in the sadness or I could have embraced that joy and I think as the moments evolved, honestly, I did a little bit of both, depending on where it took me. That's a memory that I'll never forget. It's also one that I'm super grateful that I even had the opportunity to create. So from that one moment, grief and gratitude also came. With that, watch your stress, see where it leads you. Recognize that you have the ability, no matter what's going on, to apply perspective and perhaps find some peace. And if you can't find peace, perhaps you'll find in the perspective a new understanding, which later on can help you navigate. Embrace your journey, wherever it is, however it is. And if anything, I hope you have some hope that no matter the challenge, if you're getting smashed, you know, just tap. There's one more roll waiting. Be stoked that you're even still on the mat, that you woke up, that you had breath. There's a billion examples of people having it worse there's also probably a billion examples of people having it better but whether it's worse whether it's better this life this soul that your body is playing home to it's yours and that's a pretty amazing thing i'll let you get back to it i hope that you're able to get out there and enjoy the most wonderful time of year Thanks for being out there. I appreciate you. Have a good one. And until the next time, ah, we will.